And welcome back to the second hour of Focal Point on AFR Talk. Great to have you uh, with us. Uh, We're going to talk in uh, this hour, and we'll take your calls on a couple of subjects. One of the things that we are going to talk about in this hour is this showdown with the BLM, both the Clive and Bundy deal in Nevada. And we don't want to see what the media does. The media wants to distract us from that. The media with this Clive and Bundy thing, and we've talked about that last hour, he's not saying anything radical here. He's saying the same thing that a Democrat, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, started saying in the 1960s. Government welfare is destroying the black family, making husbands irrelevant. I mean, they never can be irrelevant. They're trying to pretend that they're relevant, treat them as irrelevant, uh, treat uh, fathers as uh, irrelevant, treat employment as irrelevant. This is just decimating, devastating uh, the black community. And if we care about people, we want them to, we want them, if there's any possible way, we want them to be in healthy marriages, satisfying marriages. We want them to be able to work with their own hands to provide for their needs. There's something ennobling about that. There's something gratifying about that. There's something satisfying about that. We want that for men. We want them to have the satisfaction of being providers for their families. Uh, we want their wives to have the satisfaction of knowing they've got a husband who is a provider, who is committed to them, who cares for them, who is going to work hard for them and for their children. We want husbands to have a wives who are helpmates, who are supportive to them, who create an environment that's conducive to the raising of a family. But that's what we want. We want intact families uh, with a husband who's a breadwinner and a, a wife who is making a home for the family and children who have the security of having a mom and a dad, being raised by a mom and a dad that love each other and care for each other. That's what we want. And what Clive and Bundy is saying, what's trashing that dream in the black neighborhoods, and now it's creeping into the white uh, community as well, is government welfare programs because it appeals to the lowest common denominator in our humanity. It appeals to all of the weaknesses of the flesh, irresponsibility, sexual temptation, laziness, indulgence, a refusal to accept responsibility for my own decisions. All of those things are catered to by our welfare program. They nurture those weaknesses, those character defects, rather than giving people an incentive to overcome them, they give people an incentive to nurture them and to indulge them. And this is bad for people. We know that people are, are capable of more than that. They're capable of better than that. And, and that's what we want for them. So anyway, uh, we're going to talk in this hour about the showdown with the BLM. I want to get to a soundbite from uh, Governor Perry uh, talking about this exact same thing. Uh, let's talk. Let's grab clip number one if we can, Rob. This is Governor Rick Perry. I've actually got four Rick Perry sound bites, and we'll play those in the next uh, segments here, and we'll let you react to them. We'll take phone calls on the things that Rick Perry uh, had to say. So our comments over the next phone calls over the next hour are going to be your reactions, your responses to the things that you are going to hear Rick Perry say in these uh, sound bites. Now here's Rick Perry on yesterday with Stuart Varney, who was sitting in for Neil uh, Cavuto. And they were talking about this showdown, this potential showdown on the Oklahoma-Texas border. Now, I don't want to get off in the weeds on this thing too far, but the, but the, legally what's going on here is that the Red River is the border between Texas and Oklahoma. Now, the law defines the border between Texas and Oklahoma using the Red River. Now, here is the, here, here's the reality of it, is that the the course of the river changes over time. Rivers do that. Mississippi River has changed course innumerable times over the course of time. Now, what's happened is I don't know whether the river has moved to the north from a latitude standpoint or moved to the south. I don't know which it is. But what the BLM is claiming is, look, the border is now different than where it used to be. There's all this land now that's unclaimed. And we want it. We're going to take it uh, because the border has shifted. Nobody's got a claim to it. We're going to step in and we're going to lay our claim to it. 90,000 acres. This is private land. This is land that is in the hand of private property owners who are ranching it and farming it. And the BLM wants to come in and just take it. Uh, Similar to what they're doing with Clive and Bundy. Although here they have even, they don't even have a legal claim. I mean, with Clive and Bundy, at least they can say, look, he's not paying his grazing fees. 
But here they've got zero. They've got bupkis. They've got nothing other than the shifting uh, course of the, the Red River, which you can't blame that on Texas or Oklahoma. If you're going to find somebody to blame, blame it on God. Blame it on nature. Uh, but it doesn't create uh, an opportunity uh, for the federal government to come in and tyrannically just appropriate land. So uh, Stuart Varney, clip number one, he asked Rick Perry about what's going on and what might happen there on the border. And what the attorney general of Texas said, his name is Greg Abbott. He's going to be the next governor. And remember, we talked about this the other day. He said, look, if the BLM wants to come and take this land, they want this land that belongs to Texas, they can come and take it. That's what, they, what Greg Abbott said. They can come and take it. I mean, he threw down on the BLM. You want it, you're going to have to come and pry it out of our cold, dead fingers. That was essentially the message. So Stuart Varney asks Governor Perry, I mean, who is the governor, Greg Abbott is the attorney general, doesn't have as much authority as power as the governor. He asked Governor Perry, what do you think about what Greg Abbott said? Here's what he had to say. Sounds like a dare from the attorney general. Come yeah. and get it. That's a challenge, isn't it? Greg Abbott is a very powerful and, and thoughtful attorney general who's obviously going to be the next governor of the state of Texas. And, and uh, uh, he is on the right side of this issue, not just for the people of the state of Texas. He's on the right side of this issue from a private private. Uh, standpoint from the private property rights standpoint uh, and I don't think Americans want to see another one of these ex exhibitions from the federal government of them uh, coming in with armed troops over an issue that ought to be taken care of with a little common okay. sense when you think about it. Do, do you approve of that kind of language? Come and get it. Well, it is a dare. <laughs> it, it is a flat out Texas challenge. Actually, it's it's not a dare. It's a promise that uh, we're going to stand up for private property rights in the state of Texas. And I I don't uh, uh, I don't have a problem in the world with uh, uh, Attorney General Abbott's words here. So it's not a dare. It's a promise from the state of Texas. We are going to protect the land that belongs to private property owners in the state of Texas. Now, you, now you, have to, you have to march this out. Now, you know, we pray God that this will never happen in the state of Texas. We don't ever want this to happen. God forbid that this should happen. But you got to think through the scenarios before you get in the middle of a crisis. And the possible scenario, and it's maybe even likely, given on what we saw down with Clive and Bundy in Nevada is that the BLM will come with weapons to seize this land. They will come with assault rifles. Uh, they will come with SUVs. They will come armed to the eyeballs to seize control of this land. Now, Governor Perry has said we're not going to let that happen. So what does that mean? I mean, that means you've got to be prepared to meet force with force. So you you got you got you to think this out and decide what you're going to do now. And Governor Perry seems to be prepared, in my mind, to deploy his National Guard. Remember, he's the commander-in-chief of the National Guard. National Guard functioning as the state militia in the state of Texas. They are armed. And you can see why President Obama wants to take Apache helicopters away from the National Guard, because he doesn't want governors to have the capacity to resist his bureaucratic goons with lethal force. We'll talk more about it when we come back. Stay with us.